Doobie Powell's chords. You're gonna you're gonna really enjoy this lesson. Um, if you kind of if you if you're wanting to implement those kind of chords into your playing and into your vocabulary, just keep on watching here. And um, this lesson is advanced, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to break it down um, for those of you who may not be advanced, so that um, everybody can can still gain something from it and still understand it. Uh, I want to mention to you. Remember, my focus is the development of the musician. Um, and, and training you in a way that you can uh, learn songs faster and understand what you're doing. So that's that's the main goal, is that we learn actual songs. So I'm showing you these chords, but they don't make a difference unless you actually go on the piano. Um, try them out yourself. Um, try them, not just chord, not just one chord, but try them in succession, meaning try multiple chords the way that the song is played, and you're gonna find that you're gonna grow a lot faster than memorizing just one chord at a time. Um, it's better to memorize them in the in the progression that you have them in the video. Now, let's go ahead and start from the beginning. What I want to do is, I did this song last year, and um, I totally jacked it up. I didn't even realize it. I did the song for last Christmas, on Christmas Day, actually. And I did it in like an hour, because it was, I did it kind of, I kind of snuck away from everybody and did it. And now when I'm listening to it, I listened to it yesterday, and I said, wow, I, I some of these chords are wrong. And I never did a lesson on it. I just kind of threw it up on the side. So they, this will be, uh, this one has a breakdown on it. So there'll be two on my channel. One where it just, one from last year and then today's Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas um, by Doobie Powell. Go check it out um, and download it. Go buy it. But this is the one I'm going to be breaking down for today. Let's listen to how it, um, I want to listen to the, let's go over the first part. Uh, let me play it for you. Yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now okay, let's stop there. Okay, so I just realized, and the notes are going on the screen. I didn't even want that because I don't even know if they're the right notes. But um, let's let's start from that beginning. So we have a melody line here. Okay, have yourself a merry little. Christmas. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're in D flat, okay, and we're gonna play around with that with that kind of um, with the melody here. Okay, so our first chord is going to be a E flat minor nine, and I want you to what I want you to do is I want you to focus on the bass. On the have, it's, it's have yourself, uh, right? So on the have, we're going to be playing an E flat in the bass. Okay? So the E flat minor 9 is going to um, sound like this. It's a really nice voicing. And the way you want to voice this is to have in the left hand, you can have an E flat, B flat, and an uh, G flat. And then in the right hand, you have an F, B flat, D flat, and F. And it has a really nice sound, um, a nice dissonant sound uh, coming from the F and the F sharp together. And also, in the coming from the fact that we're only really playing an E flat minor chord and a B flat minor chord, so that um, you always want to understand your theory and, and why you're doing what you're doing. Because some people may have a hard time reaching um, this chord 
depending on how you know big their hands are or they may want to know well how do I play how do I play this chord differently and, and in order to play a chord differently you have to understand the theory behind what's going on so if I'm telling you you got a B flat minor which is this in the right hand and you have an E flat minor which is this in the left hand then really you can arrange those notes in the best way that works for you. So instead of doing this, I could do this. And it, and it still works and I don't have this wide of a spread. So understanding that will help you to play songs like these because you understand the chordal context behind it. The second chord is gonna be, okay, so the first one is have yourself. Okay, so first chord, have, I keep wanting to put an A flat in there. You don't want to put the A flat in there because it would change it to an E minor 11. And that's a different sound than the E minor, E, e flat minor 9. Okay, so the first chord is this. Second chord is this. So what we have in the left hand is an A flat and a G flat. And in the right hand we have a C, F, A flat, and C. The chordal context would be an A flat minor, an A flat seventh, okay, or a minor seventh interval, and a F minor chord doubled up on the C. So have yourself, wait, have yourself a, uh, and then Merry Little Christmas, you got four chords. Merry Little Christmas, each of those would be um, one. So the Merry would be an E flat minor seven. Hear the notes, E flat minor seven. Okay, the Little will be, which appears to be a, a, a C minor chord in um, uh, second inversion, but it's really not. And I'll explain that later. So, Merry Little Chris, that's um, an F sharp major seven chord or G flat major seven chord, G flat, B flat, D and F, and then Mus. A really nice voicing here, it's beautiful chords. So how does it sound together? Let me, uh, let me play this little thing here if I can. I had to download some kind of track. It's not the same as a song, but we'll figure it out. Actually, no, no, I'm tearing that off. All right, let me try it again. I just want me. Okay, so have yourself. Okay. All right, so now let's go to the next one. So uh, let me see here. Let's go. Have yourself All right, so now let's get to that part. So we're at that. So So Merry Merry Little Chris uh, Merry Little Christmas. Now go back to this F major 7. What I want you to do when you, when playing Doobie Powell voicings, you need to have your major seventh chords memorized, all of them. So you should know what a major seventh chord is. It's a major chord with the seventh note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have every key memorized that you can do it. D flat major seven, D major seven, E major seven, the E flat major seven, I mean E major seven, F major seven, G flat major seven, G G major seven, A flat major seven, A major seven, B flat major seven, B major seven, and C major seven. You should be able to do those very quickly um, and pull them off very quickly. That way, um, you're not struggling so much um, with just memorizing one note at a time, but you're actually just pulling off these major seven chords very quickly. So that's what that's what I would recommend because he's using a lot of these major sevens and I just needed to kind of go to them. 
you know, I need to be able to go to them quickly. So that 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 will just help you in dealing with, um, especially with dual power, dual power chords, because he's using a lot of major seven chords, a lot of major ninth chords, and a lot of minor nines as well. Um, okay. So with that said, we're gonna come off the merry little. Uh, where was I at? Merry little. There's that major seven chord, Christmas. Now we're going back to a F sharp major seven chord. Then we're going to a D flat major seven chord, which or a minor or a major nine chord really. So we have an F sharp. See, so I don't have to say the notes anymore because I told you, <laughs> I told you memorize those seven. So we got a we got an F sharp major seven. We have a C sharp major. You want if you want to see this as a major seven, then it makes it easier for you. The ninth note is an E flat though. And that's going to add a little bit um, uh, more color and a, a better sound. Okay, and then you want to go to the F sharp minor nine. Or, okay. All right, now. <laughs> let's, let, let's go from the beginning. You should be following me here. So, have no beat. Let me just go through the chord by chord. Have yourself. You should be playing it with me if you to get the best benefit here. A merry little Christmas major seven make the Yule tides, which is a D flat major seven. Then we have this F minor nine, F sharp minor nine, and then this nice voice in here, which is an F diminished seventh chord, and F sharp diminished seven, and then an E major seven. See all these major seven chords that are here. So I have. Um, the, okay, so the F sharp minor nine. Da, 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 da. Okay, now what's going here? What's going on here is on because remember that melody line. There's a G sharp in the melody line. The G sharp in the melody line also happens to be the top note. It also happens to be the top note of an A major seven chord. So what this chord is actually doing is it's actually playing an A major seven chord, but it's playing that um, dropping the top two notes, you know, dropping them. So I'm taking these two notes up here, we're moving them down here, and then we're adding an F sharp and a C sharp on the bottom, making it that F sharp minor nine. And that's the reason why that chord works, because of the implied G sharp at the top, which is really moved to the middle of the chord. So, um, Mer Merry Little Christmas, make the Yule Tides. Okay, so and those of you who really want to hear that melody, then you can play it. You do not have to play it in this inversion. This is what allows us to experiment with music because we can play it um, like this if you want to have that melody on top. And what you can do then in the left hand is have the F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp here, providing dissonance between that, opening up the chord and making it sound bigger. But it is the same chord, the F sharp minor nine. Okay, and then from there, we're gonna go into a nice little. Uh, Dewey does a lot of chords where the melody, the melody of the chord, is held while the quality changes. So what happens here is. And, and you see how that 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 chord that note works with all three of those chords, so it becomes a it becomes in essence a chord progression, where all of the chords are connected, and what is connecting those chords is one note, the G sharp. So I'm wanting you to understand how this is working, and not just hear the notes. So da, 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 that's the chord. Here's the next chord. Here's the next chord. You see how those work? Sounds really nice. 
And so the first chord I already talked about, that second chord is, um, I'll spell it out for you. It's a F, it's, well, we already know that this note is on top. And actually I've been playing an F sharp and I shouldn't. Um, it should be an A, uh, G sharp, E flat, C, A, and an F sharp. And really this is just a diminished, this is just really just a diminished chord. But we're using what I call on my uh, website a stacking principle which means you're just you're adding notes within you're adding notes within the diminished chord but it's not quite diminished it's it's kind of a diminished it's it's really i like seeing it as an f sharp diminished chord with the g sharp on the top okay or diminished seven okay but then um i did say we won't be yeah yeah, I like that. I like that explanation better. So an F sharp, F sharp um, diminished seventh with the G sharp, which adds a nine. Okay, and then um, so those are the notes, and then we have a uh, we have an E major seven. Here's a seventh note. It doesn't change the quality. Any of these notes within this chord can go on the top. So the G sharp, which is in the middle, can go on the top. That's why we can use this chord. Okay, so let's go from the top again. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. F sharp major seven, D flat major nine, F sharp minor nine, have that chord and then we have the E flat. We're at the front now. Front. I think does that work? No, no, no. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, where am I at? I gotta have to let me. I don't forgot what the what the, the the thing is. Let me listen to this again. <laughs> All right, let me listen to this again just to kind of get my bearings here where I'm at. goes dun, dun, dun. so so and and that and i'm just kind of noticing that that's that that's probably why we're ending out with this e e major seven because we're we're we're, we're now the motif of the song is kind of now in the key of e in a sense you know because dun, 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 dun. that's a, that's an e an e major you know an e ionian scale so so basically, the song is kind of going, it's, it's kind of changing um, into E. And, and so we're ending on that E now. Okay, so, and then the chord will be, uh, in the left hand, you'll have what's called a sus, C sus seven. Okay, it's a C sharp sus seven, which is a C sharp, F sharp, and a B. And in the right hand, you have a B, uh, and an A sharp, Let's do F sharp and an E flat. And then, okay, so that's the chord. And then I want you to go like that. And that's that's where I'm at. So But you're doing it in you're doing it in fourths though. So you're gonna go. Okay, so it'll be from no, um, from now on. Okay, so what you're gonna do is on when you go this when you do da, da, 
in that in the left hand, I want you to hit an A there. Now this is a very dissonant kind of a voicing that's leading us to this chord here, which is a B7 sharp, nine sharp, five chord. So it's an approach, it's an approach um, move that's getting us to this chord right here. Because what's happening is in the left hand, you're going, you're just, you're approaching it from a half step up to go down to it. But in the right hand, you are approaching it whole step away from your target note, which is this. So, and in essence, you really don't even need the B flat because if you want to play it rootless, you can, you can still, you can still do it like that. I mean, if you wanted to, but here playing it this way with the B flat and the D flat and the D in the bass gives it more context, all right? Um, now, I'm, I'm trying to do this in a way where you really do have this song, so I'm, I'm, I'm being very complete in my teaching today instead of rushing it through. So I'm hoping that some of you are getting this. So let's start from the top. Um, where am I at here? Okay, <clears throat> so we're at the... Right, and then side, and then... Or all right, so let's let's let me start from the top. I need to get my bearings and just kind of make sure that um, we're okay so far. So hopefully you should be playing along with us here. Uh, if you have them, you can rewind the video. Here we go. Um, here we go, E flat minor 9, E flat and then walk it up, E flat major 7, E flat minor 9, and then we have that chord, and then All right, so that out that that would really that's what I call one of them a head turner chord. So if you play if you play that chord, you know, expect people to kind of look your way because of, and be, it's because of the it's because of where it's going because because what we have here is really a C major seven chord C E G B and then what you can do with that chord is you can have an A. You can have that A and D there, but really, it's really a D13 sus chord, right? But you don't necessarily have to play it with the D sus, but let me, with, with the D in the bottom, but let me, let me show you how it sounds if you go. So it, as a transition chord, it looks really well, and it's easy to pull off because it's all white notes, right? But remember that melody being on top, it makes it really work really fine as a C major seventh chord. So you can see it that you can see it that way too. But it's really a D thirteen sus chord, um, and so that's the implied chord. And then after that chord, um, you're gonna go. Now we're back to an A flat minor, an A flat major. You can play it as an A flat major seven, which is this. Okay, so an A flat major. This is a regular old A flat major chord. Add the G below the A flat to give it the seventh sound, and put a C in the bottom. So. Okay, so after that one, you're gonna play a, a G flat major seven chord, and then you're gonna have a you have a dominant uh, you have a dominant what's called a dominant sharp nine, which is gonna be. So basically, in the left hand you play a C and an E. In the right hand you play a E flat on the top with your pinky, and then you wanna you wanna kind of twang from the A flat to the B flat. So. And then the chord before it, did I tell you about that? The F sharp major seven? And then 
then nice chord nice chord here and then after this well this chord here and by the way remember I told you remember I told you this is a bunch of G7 uh, memorize all of your major seven chords okay because the next step after memorizing all those major um, um, after you memorize all those major seventh, you want to make sure you memorize your major seven drop, <laughs> drop two chords, right? So that that's when you take that when you take that chord and you drop the note the second from the top, and now you got to memorize C seven drop two, G G uh, C sharp seven drop two, D seven drop two, right? Because all of these. All right, so basically all of those you need to mem memorize. All right, and um, so what's going on here is when we get to this part here, when we get here, what we have is a G flat major seven, which I already told us about that he uses a lot of major sevens, but it's a drop two, it's, a, it's in a drop two voicing because, well, it's not even a drop two voicing. Um, the notes are all just <laughs> rearranged, com you know, not completely, but they're rearranged because this F is at the bottom here and this B flat is moved to the bottom, but it's still just a major seven chord. So, um, this is how it's played normally. And this is how it's played rearranged, okay? And then we're back to the beginning. You go from here. So um, let me let you hear that. Okay, uh-oh. Let me make sure that mic didn't go off because I'm actually, this is my second time recording this because my mic stopped. And I want to make sure. All right, I think I'm still on. All right, now I am going to, I'm going to, hopefully this has helped you so far. Um, what I want to do is I want to, there, the, um, there's a, a part in the second part of the song because what I'm going to do is. I'm gonna put the rest of the song in for the members. There's a part in this song that is so crazy, but I wanna kinda of hit it just a little bit, just a little bit here. Um, and then um, for those who are members, you know, because I do most of my teaching on my membership site. So if you if you do have an interest in that and taking it even further than the YouTube videos, then check out the link. Um, and then, you know, you can see how to be a part of that. But what I want to do is I want to go to the part that has, um, let me see here. He plays the entire song again. So if, when he goes through it the first time, he goes all the way. And then he goes to the song again. And it's very similar chords, but it's a slight difference. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna explain that on my website. The, the slight differences between the two chords, the, the between the two verses. But there is a part on here that I want you to hear that I also want to show you. So hold on. really nice song to play. You guys gotta show if you're playing this for family. You got, if you're showing this to family, then you need to you need to have this chord in the second part. You wanna, you wanna. They gonna give you that musician face, because <laughs> because check out this the away part. So da, da, will be miles. that part there. Will be miles. Okay, so that part there. So um, so now I'm on the second part, and I kind of skipped all the way to the end when we go. Right? And then we have this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful voicings here. Um, so that that whole that whole voicing there is so the chords are so beautiful, and I want to just kind of kind of want to explain something a little bit real quick. On um, guess what that chord is now? 
what's going on here is just a simple old C chord. And, and this the, the thing I love about music is that every chord that you see is actually not a very, very dip, difficult, complicated chord. And in reality, some of these chords are really simple. The first chord you learn when you were banging on a piano, when you're playing that C major chord, who knew that you could use that chord in context to make it sound just, and, and, and even make a C chord <laughs> sound like you're doing something crazy, when in reality, what's happening here um, is that the, uh, let's take this, G, let's take, well, just the C, it's still a C chord, but let's take this C and put it on top, and let's take this G and put it on the bottom. Now, now check this out. It's still a C chord. I just, I just moved the notes around. But in context, and this is where developing your ear will help you, in context of where to play that, because, because when we go, we're playing a C there. So it's appropriate then to do a chord that has a C as its top note. And because this is a regular old C chord, you know what I'm saying? You can choose to do a C, <laughs> a C there and rearrange the notes differently. Music is up to you how you want to, what you like to do. This is why we don't compare musicians because every musician wants a sound that they that you know wants to do what they want to do with that sound you see I'm my job is to break it down for you to so you can understand why they were doing that and what happens is if you look at the bottom the bottom it's really a 13th chord it's really a 13 flat 9 because the implied chord here is an E flat 13 flat 9 chord so check it out let me See how that sounds? And, and, and why that works? But see, but he's playing it. He doesn't need to play it like this. He doesn't need to play it as an E flat 13 flat 9 chord. Because guess what? The C major chord is contained within that chord. So he can leave it open voice like this, still imply the 13th chord, right? But only, only act like it's just a regular OC chord. And that's the reason it works, okay? That's the reason it works. And then after that, he goes to the A, uh, A major seven chord and the D, okay, and then to the uh, major nine here. And then we have that that nice voicing here, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna continue the video for the members um, because I want to show them how that all works, how the chords work together, why it works. Um, so you know if you're interested, like I said, uh, check out the link. But I'm I'm hoping that you really enjoyed this video. You know I really enjoy teaching you, and I I had to do a lot of corrections, a lot of corrections on this video. Um, so go ahead and 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 get these chords, kind of get them under your fingertips, get them under your vocabulary. I really wish you and your families a uh, happy holidays right now. I know it's a holiday season and a happy new year for everybody watching. And um, just may you take this new year and, 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 and just grow and take your piano playing to another level. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you again later.